Hey everyone! I have made a custom blueprint element node that allows me to take a point and copy it upwards, which has allowed me to create these miniature skyscrapers. And then I realized I could create this. And then I realized I could create this. And this. And this little, I don't know, car graveyard art project and these little car flowers. You know, I think a bumblebee would really like this flower. <laughs> little Transformers joke. All six of these things use the same custom node, just in a different way. And what this node does is it takes an offset, and every time it runs through it, it will copy the points off by that offset. So in this case, it's copying the points up by 300 every time. It also accepts a rotation. So what this thing does is it rotates by negative three and negative five every time and then copies them up. Uh, it accepts scale. These things are getting a little tinier, but you can see it more with these. These things are getting a little bigger the farther out they go. And then there's a minimum and maximum height to tell it how many times to copy it upwards. So without further ado, let me show you how to create this thing. I'm going to start off by creating a blueprint. Type actor bp underscore, let's call it copy, points tutorial. I'll also go ahead and create a PCG graph, PCG graph, PCG underscore copy points tutorial. And I'll go ahead and create the blueprint element now, PCG blue print element. And I'll call this BPCG underscore copy points tutorial. So in the blueprint, I'm going to add a bunch of variables. These are what I use for these configuration values. First one is going to be offset. That'll be a vector. Next one is going to be rotation, which is a rotator. And these three are basically the transform, absolute rotation. And that is going to be a Boolean. And this lets me toggle between world rotation and absolute rotation. So if I go back here, this one is using absolute rotation, which makes all the points rotate this direction, and this one is using local rotation. Other than that, they're exactly the same, if you look at this offset value. Back to the blueprint. Scale, so that I can make these things get bigger or smaller as they go. Height, which is an integer. Let's call it height range, actually. Height range, integer, min height, and max height. And so all of these are going to be public, except for height range. Height range, I'm going to do something else. And that is, in the construction script, I'm going to take max height and subtract min height from it. And then I will set height range to this value. That way I only have to set the starting height and the top height, and I'll automatically calculate this height range. Compile and save. Now I can add the components. So I'll add a spline component and I'll add a PCG. And this PCG I'm going to set to copy points. What just happened there? Copy points tutorial. There we go. Compile, save. And I can just drag this into the world. Let me go ahead and update this spline right now. And 
I will make the spline. If I click on the spline here, I can edit it. I'll make the spline a closed loop. And that should be done with the blueprint. Now in the PCG graph, it's going to be fairly straightforward. I'm going to start off with a get spline data. Actor filter can be self since the spline and the PCG live in the same blueprint. And I'm going to do a spline sampler. And this, I want to change it to distance on interior. I can leave it at 100 and 100. Then a projection node. I'm just going to use landscape height for the target. And I can uncheck project rotations because there are no rotations coming in here. Next, I'll do a bounds modifier. And for this, I want to set it to negative 200, negative 200, 200, 200. And that's because my walls are 400 wide. And four walls means I'm going to have a 400 by 400 box. So this sets the bounds to 400 by 400. And let's just do 0 to 1,000. That way, if I tilt the buildings or anything, uh, they will, the bounds will intersect and prevent them from spawning over each other. Next, a self-pruning node. Now I'll toss in a transform points node. This if you don't want to rotate your points, is kind of unnecessary, but in this case I do want to rotate them. You might not want to rotate them because a lot of cities, the points are on a square grid, so it wouldn't make much sense to rotate the buildings. But in this case I'm not building an actual city, I'm just doing an example of how to build this thing. Next is a density noise node, but I'm not going to put that in yet because I want to show you why I'm putting it in. So after that comes the copy points loop. And then the static mesh spawner. So let's start off with the static mesh spawner. And the mesh entry I will use is the wall with a window. And let's see, there we go. We have some walls. But they are just single walls, they're not squares, they're not um, encapsulating building. So what I'm going to need to do is take the starting point of the static mesh, which is either this side or this side, it doesn't really matter, and I'm going to move it in four different directions and rotate them in the proper direction to create walls. So for that, I can just use four different transform points node. I'll put them after this one that does the random rotation so that all of these are based on this random rotation. because all of these are rotated locally, they'll all inherit this rotation. All right, for this, I could go through some trial and error and try to figure out which point is which, like um, 200 on all of these. Okay, so I've moved it there, and then I can rotate it by, I don't know, negative 90. There we go, now it's an X. So that probably means that this is the center point. But I've already done this work, so I'm not going to bother <laughs> redoing it. If you're doing it by hand, I suggest that you modify one and move it, modify another and move it, and go on from there. Just the slow process of updating all of these. And this one is rotation zero. All right, let's see what we got. And there we go. So now I can build out the blueprints. 
and that will live right here between these two. So let me open this thing up. Okay, the first thing I'm going to override is a node title override, and I'm going to call this copy points tutorial. This impacts when you drag the node out into the graph, the name of the node itself, the default name, because you can change it. Then I'm going to check on the class defaults exposed to library, and the category will be custom, since that's what I'm using for all of my custom nodes, and description is copy points with user defined offset rotation and scale. Okay, now if I compile and save this, I should be able to go into this tutorial and over under custom, I see copy points tutorial. I can drag that in and it's named copy points tutorial. And if I hook it up, nothing is going to happen because I have inputs, but I don't have any outputs. I'm not actually doing anything with it yet. So, I'm just going to go on here, and the next function I'm going to override is execute with context. This will be a fairly standard setup. If you've watched any of my previous Blueprint tutorials, you will recognize what I'm doing here. First, I'm going to set context, promote it to a local variable, and call that context. And I'm going to take the input and break the PCG data collection. And this tagged data is going to go through a for each loop. And I'll hook that up to the set. Each time in the for each loop, I'm going to break the PCG tagged data. And I will cast that to PCG spatial data. And hook that up. That spatial data, I'll point data with context, and hook up the context here. And then I'm going to run this all through a variable loop. I'm using a variable loop instead of a point loop because a variable loop lets me return a variable number of points instead of a single point. And because I'm going to create points in a range of min height to max height, like 10 to 30 or whatever I choose, it's going to be a variable number of points. And I'll show you when we get inside the variable loop, but it outputs an array instead of a single point, which is how this is all handled. In context is going to be context. And in data is going to be this points data with context. Once it's complete, I'm going to make PCG tagged data. And this I'm going to add to array. And this array I'm going to actually promote to a local variable as well, and I'll call it PCG tagged data array. So I'm adding this every time instead of just sending it to the output, because this for each loop is going to run through multiple times. So this allows me to continue adding these points and the results of the for each loop every time. All right, that's about everything. When the for each loop completes, I need to hook it up to the return node. And the return node is going to be this PCG tagged data array that I then make a PCG data collection and hook that straight on up. And now I'm going to go into the variable loop body. And if I just hook up this in point to the return value, it'll make an array. There's not really anything in it, just the points that I've sent in. But I should be able to inspect this and select the debug object. And I see 21 points. And before, 21 points. So it's working. All right, this variable loop body. This is where things get a little messy. I'm going to set this point to point. I'll be reusing it in a couple places, such as here. 
Let me break the PCG point. And for this, I only need transform and density, so I'll uncheck everything else. And let's start off with the loop. To do that, I'm going to need to hook up some variables. So I'm going to create the same variables in here that I have done in the blueprint. So that's going to be offset as a vector, rotation as a rotator, absolute rotation as a boolean, scale as a vector, that wasn't a vector, there we go, height as an integer, and min height. I don't need max height because min height plus height is going to be the maximum height that we care about. Okay, now I can expose all of these. And if I compile and save, I can go back into the PCG graph and expand this, and we see all of these values. We'll have to do one more thing to actually start making use of these values, but for now I'm not worrying about that. Let's finish off this blueprint. Let me break the transform. And Right, I said that we'll start off with the for loop, so I'm going to take density and multiply. Let me hook this up here instead. And let's take height. So first we'll calculate the random height that we're using. And we can multiply it by density, but the problem with just doing that is if the height is a range of, let's say, 0 to 10, then when you multiply it by density, density is 0 to 1. And then we're going to be truncating it instead of rounding. And so if you truncate 0.99 times height, it's going to come out as a maximum of 9 instead of a maximum of 10. So to fix that, I can add 1 to it. And potentially, this would result in a height of 1 higher, but that'll only happen if density is exactly equal to 1, which should be pretty rare. All right, for this, I'm going to change the output to integer by right-clicking on the output pin. And now I can add min height to it. And so now we have the range of the minimum height to whatever random height range we want to go to. And now for this, I can create a for loop. And first in index, I'll start with 1. Last index is going to be this. OK, if the index equals 1, it's going to be the very first point, and I want to actually just send that straight through. I don't want to do any rotation. I don't want to do any scaling on it. So I'm just going to say if it equals 1, go into a branch. And now I'm going to add it to an array, add point to a add array. The array I'm going to promote to a local variable. And I'll call it PCG point array. And now if it's anything else, Let's finish this up. If it's anything else, I want it to set the location, rotation, and scale. So let's start off with location. I can add offset to it and make a transform. But if I'm rotating these points, then just adding offset will make them go in a single direction as opposed to continuing to curve. So I need to offset them by the rotation. So for that, I can plug it into a rotate vector. And I'll plug rotation into the rotate vector. And then I can hook that up. 
but if I'm scaling the points up or down, the offset should get bigger or smaller accordingly. Otherwise, you'll get gaps or a lot of overlap between your points. So I need to multiply offset by scale. And then I can plug that into the rotate vector, which then plugs into the addition, which then goes out into the location. Let's, uh, yeah, move that up there. OK, so the rotation is a little more complex. So let's just do scale, take an easy win. I'm going to multiply scale by this new scale and output it into the transform. And now rotation. So I'm going to start with the easy one, combine rotators, and I'll take rotation. And this is going to be if absolute rotation, so world rotation, is set to on. That's all you need to do. If it's not, then you need to do this little workaround, invert rotator. So we're converting the rotator over to a local rotation that we can then work with and then converting it back to world rotation. Something like that. I didn't quite understand exactly why we have to do this, but I do know that it works. So, so we invert it, combine the rotators, which is the same action that we're doing here, and then we invert it again. And now I can add a select option, select rotator. And I'm going to plug this absolute rotation into the selector. And if I have absolute rotation checked, I'll select the absolute one. Otherwise, I'll select the local one. And then I can return that into rotation instead. And now, if we get to the for loop and find that we're not working on the first point, we need to set this transform to the point transform. And for that, I can do a set members in PCG point. And I can find that by dragging the point out and finding set members in PCG point. I'm going to check the transform and hook up this transform. And then I can just hook up the false here. We can reuse the same add node because in either case, we're modifying the point or just sending the point straight through. And then this right here just uses the point that we've modified if we've changed it. And lastly, we need the return node. So I can grab this array, the PCG point array that we're adding to, and drop that into the return node, and then hook up the return node. Compile, save. All right, so now we can go back to the PCG graph and hook up all these variables. For this, I'm going to use a get actor property which allows me to pull in variables from the blueprint because I've pointed the actor filter itself. I could change it to anything else, uh, just like a spline. And in this case, just like the spline, we can get it from the blueprint. So the first actor property is going to be offset. And I can just follow along this guide here. I just need one for each of them. I need six of these. Rotation. Rotation. Absolute rotation. Absolute rotation. Scale. Scale. Height. And min height. Oh, it's not height, it's height range, which might mean yeah, I do need to change this one to height range. So let me change that to height range. Height range. Compile, save. Back here, now I can hook all of these up. And 
and let's see what we can do. So for these, I know that they're 300 height because I've looked at the static mesh, so I'll set the offset to be 300 every time. I'll leave the rotation at nothing. I don't need to set it. Scale, I'll set to one on everything. If you leave it at zero, then the first one will be scale one, the second one will be scale zero, and everything after that will be scale zero. Min height five, max height 10. And there we go. So there is one problem here, and everything is pegged to the max height. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Since they're 11, that means they're all density 1. So let's take a look. Inspect. And where's the density? Density, 1 for everything. And earlier on in the tutorial, I said that I'd put a density noise here. Well, this is why I waited to do it. I want to show you what happens without it. So if I just hook up a density noise right here, there we go. And now if I drag this around, it'll be random points, random heights. All right, let's say we want to add additional meshes to randomly spawn. I'll change this one to just be a flat wall, 400 by 300, and this one to be wall with a door. 400 by 300 as well. And you see here that every single wall on each building is the same. And that's because the random seed that I'm copying over here is the same for everything. I'm, I'm copying the exact random seed. So if I inspect this, you can see a bunch with the same random seed. I could modify the random seed in here, but it's possible that I want to reuse the same random seed. So what I'm going to do instead is add a transform points node here. And it might be perfectly valid to have buildings that are all the same, like maybe you're selecting a different color, so you want the buildings to all be the same different color. That's perfectly good use case. Now I've hooked this back up, and I can click in the transform points here, recompute seed. I could also do it in here on each one of them. It just depends. I like to do things in bulk in a single place as opposed to on each individual one. That might not be the best idea. I don't exactly know how PCG graph works, so I don't know if sending it through this transform points and recomputing the seed is going to take longer to generate than just having each of these generate the seed, but in practice, it doesn't seem to be affecting me too much. And there we go. They are random heights, they have random doorways, and I can set them to five to, let's say 30. I can set their rotation to you know, 15, five, given this weird twisty thing. I can set absolute rotation so that they are swaying in the breeze instead. I can set their scale to uh, get bigger as they go. It doesn't quite work with this, but well, that's how it goes. Play around with this, knock yourself out, tell me if there is anything cool you do with it. I'd love to see it. I'll see you next time.